people that I guess maybe don't have a relationship with God or a higher power, etc. When you come to them and say things and be like, oh, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. Maybe you should have approached this this way or that way. Some people can get on to you and be like, oh, but you're meant to be this holier than thou person. But you was doing this last week or last year you was this person or yesterday you did that. And yeah, that can all be true. But it's what we learn from those mistakes and those poor choices and being remorseful and sorry for those things and striving to do better every single day is what being saved is about. That's what it is about. It's not about being perfect. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. It is Taj, aka Mataj Massage, and this is Mataj Midas Living. I hope everyone is blessed. I hope you are well. I hope everything is going right for you right now. <sighs> I do apologize about the noise. If you can hear it, you probably can because it sounds quite loud in my flat. Basically, the workmen are back again next door and they're just making a bag of noise which is very annoying because all the other times that i was filming prior to this video today because i haven't filmed in a little while there were no men doing works but the day i want to film they want to make noise but this is the only day that i can film so again apologies for the noise this video today is gonna be something that's kind of been on my heart also, there was a conversation that I had yesterday with a client for a um, energy reading as well. And it just made me think of it again. So it's all kind of linked in. So I'm glad I'm filming this today. And basically the topic of this video is, I've got it written down, being saved doesn't make you perfect. So that is the theme of the video. This is something that God put on my heart and something I've been thinking about recently over the past few weeks or so and today is the day where I'm gonna actually give this information that has been channeled through to me because I feel like I've been holding on it for too long because sometimes God gives me messages and I'll write it down or I'll have it in mind and then I won't share it and then something will remind me I'm like oh yeah I need to share that information so I don't believe every time I get the message I have to film it there and then Apart from that rainbow one, that was definitely a sense of urgency, but I feel like we're in the right time to do this one. But before we get into that, if we vibe, join the tribe and make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you are notified for when I have new videos out and also press notify all so then you will receive a notification every single time I release something new. So I've got some jumbled up notes here so bear with me but the first thing I wanted to talk about the thing that links in the conversation that I had with a client yesterday was along the lines of the fact that it's actually hard to be a good person and the reason why I say that it's hard to be a good person is because this world that we live in is very corrupted we literally live in a corrupted system and it is led by corrupted leaders and then there are extremely corrupted people behind the scenes and all of that stuff and it has been created in a in a way so that we are encouraged to do things that we shouldn't do rather than making the right choice so in that sense what we have to do is then stand up against all of that stuff so basically being set apart so don't follow the crowd if the crowd is going to the right you go left if the crowd then goes to the left you go right even if it seems like you're the mad one in the situation if something doesn't feel right in your gut you have to follow that feeling so for example i'm trying to think of an example you know like when you're a kid and your parents like oh we'll 
just because your friends are doing it doesn't mean you should do it kind of thing it's that kind of thing so if everyone in the world is doing something it doesn't mean that it's right just because everyone agrees and thinks it's okay to do something it doesn't mean it is and it tends to be the easier choice to just follow the crowd rather than to go against the grain and push against that resistance and do what's right so getting into these notes now because there is a lot of notes i'm just like okay it's not going to be a long one though i don't think it will be it's just a few pages of notes and then if anything comes through while i'm talking and going through these notes i will share that with you too so as i said the theme of this video is being saved doesn't make you perfect so what I kind of linked that with is being saved is like being rescued from something really bad. So even though you've been rescued from something, it doesn't mean you're fully healed from whatever it is you've been rescued from. And a few of the examples I gave were being rescued from drowning, being rescued from a fire or being um rescued from a predator so delving into that a little bit more so if it was an example with a predator say you were kidnapped or abused or whatever the case may be if you're in that situation for a prolonged time there is a lot of mental manipulation that goes on there is a lot of let me try and think there's a lot of breaking down of what you know is right and then because there's the ma manipulation going on then your thoughts of what you believe to be right and wrong can be distorted and that's how you end up with situations like people having stockholm syndrome where they care about the person that wronged them so the person that either kidnapped them or abused them etc etc so just because you've been rescued from that situation clearly everything is not okay you have to then rewire your brain you have to work on things you may have to go to therapy and kind of rebuild yourself so it's like unlearning and then relearning to know what's right and wrong but there's always going to be mistakes on the way or there's going to be situations that trigger certain things and can mess with your head and make you question whether it's right or wrong because those previous thoughts because of what you've been through then cause distortion in a normal way of thinking or the correct way of thinking hopefully that makes sense then I've written an example when it comes to drowning, for example, if you've been, say you drowned in a pool or the sea or something and then you get pulled out of the water, you're um, resuscitated, all of that stuff, there can still be water in the lungs and treatment will be required and there can still be effects in the short term and the long term. Yes, you've been saved. Yes, you've been rescued, but there are still issues at hand that have to be dealt with. Um, and then the same with a fire, if you were to survive a fire, um, I've written, yes, you've survived the fire, but there can be damage such as smoke inhalation, there could be burns that leave you with scars, etc. And sometimes those scars don't fade and they stay with you. So yes, you have been saved, yes, you have been rescued, but there are still things from the past that have to be dealt with or that are never going to go away and this is kind of how i linked it into being saved doesn't mean that you're perfect so what i've written here is having every good intention of walking away from sin but the people around you aren't saved you have to take a step back because birds of a feather flock together so what i mean with that is when you make the decision to be saved and become born again etc a lot of changes have to be made because if you're still locked in that situation that you was in prior or engaging with those people that were leading you astray perhaps or the people that may not have the best intentions for you etc you have to break yourself away from that and form a completely new path obviously if there's people that are on your level and on your wave and they've got the same kind of hopes and aspirations and the same morals and those kind of things then you can by all means 
continue to have those people in your circle because they will help you thrive but then there's also things from the past that might try and drag you back into what you were in so the way that kind of links in with when i was talking about drowning or um stockholm syndrome with a perpetrator or um being burnt and stuff just because you've been pulled out of that situation and you've been rescued there are still things that are going to try and drag you back or there's things that will remind you or try and take you back to those places that you were before even though you've taken a step away from it and you've chosen a new path then the next thing i've got here is depending on what's going on in your life or who you were before being saved the battle to be righteous is ongoing and it has ups and downs and having days that are easier to do the right things and other days are a struggle and there's sometimes days where you'll do the wrong thing and almost end up drowning again so that kind of links back into the whole scenario with drowning and what i meant there was is so for example i had my second baptism when i was 19 yes when i was 19 i am now 33 from 19 to 33 i have done a lot of things that i shouldn't have done things that are not in alignment with god sorry about that noise it sounds like it's even louder now yeah things that are totally out of alignment with god i've made mistakes i've made poor choices and i've probably even done that today this day that i'm filming this there's definitely things that i probably shouldn't have done that i have done like how i've responded to certain situations or how i've reacted to certain situations i could have handled and dealt with it better but here we are we're human and we make mistakes and i own up to my mistakes and I am trying to do better every single day. And that that is the main point. It doesn't matter what your intentions are. Actually, no, it does matter. Sorry, I've said that wrong. It does matter what your intentions are. But what doesn't matter is that you're not perfect. Like, that doesn't matter because no human is perfect. And people always say oh but you're a christian or oh but you believe in this or whatever your religion is i don't class myself as a christian i wouldn't say that i have a religion my thing is i have a relationship with god although the god that i believe in is the god of abraham but that's a whole other story that i don't really need to get into it's it's not important but people tend to, people that I guess maybe don't have a relationship with God or a higher power, etc. When you come to them and say things and be like, oh, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. Maybe you should have approached this this way or that way. Some people can get onto you and be like, oh, but you're meant to be this holier than thou person. But you was doing this last week or last year you was this person or yesterday you did that. And yeah, that can all be true. But it's what we learn from those mistakes and those poor choices and being remorseful and sorry for those things and striving to do better every single day is what being saved is about. That's what it is about. It's not about being perfect. And I just want to stress that is it's not about being perfect. No human can be perfect because we are human. Something else that I've written here is when you're saved, you can also have scars that need to heal. While healing, this can be painful and you may not feel like your old self ever again. But that's not a bad thing because now you can learn who you are now because you've been saved and start a new journey with the new scars reminding you of how far you've come. And that is definitely a big thing for me because I look back on my life and some of the things I've been through some of the traumas some of the ups some of the downs some of the poor choices and decisions and things that I've done and sometimes I look back and I'm like maybe I shouldn't have done that or maybe I could have handled this better or just <laughs> and sometimes you have regret as well but then when I really really sit and think about the things that I've done or things that I've been through and people ask me like oh Taj would you change such and such a thing in your life and honestly I wouldn't change anything that's happened to me 
in my past, no matter how bad it's been, no matter how hard it's been to go through those processes, all of those things have led me to who I am right now in this moment. And I love the person that I am now. I'm not perfect, but I love the person I am now. I love the relationship that I have with God. I love what I'm doing in my life. I'm happy with the journey that I'm on so far and I'm excited to continue growing and building on the person I am and just continue to be better every single day. So in that sense, we have to go through those bad things to get to where we are. And some of those things looking back can make you feel uncomfortable. Some things can make you feel ashamed. Some things can make you feel guilty and all those feelings are okay, but don't dwell on them too much the the thing that we need to do is okay what can i do to do better what can i do to be better how can i change these things how can i learn from these mistakes these poor choices etc etc and then move forward and be better so what i've written here is just a little bit about when we sin so i've put remember when we sin it isn't always a mistake sometimes it's a bad decision or a choice Sometimes we are unaware and the ones that we don't talk about enough is when we make the willing choice to sin, even though we know we shouldn't do it. So I touched on that a little bit before. So I think the majority of us think of sin as making mistakes and doing things when we're unaware of the fact that it's wrong. But a lot of us don't talk about when we willfully go against God and do the wrong thing and make the wrong choice. And a lot of us do that. And I don't think enough of us admit to that. And I've finally got to a place where I can now admit it. And even to this day, I still make poor choices where I know it's not the right thing to do and still do it anyways. Not as much as before because I'm trying to do better every day, but I, sometimes you can't even explain it. It's just, it is what it is. Like it can't be explained away because sometimes you're like, I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And we shouldn't do that because it is the wrong thing to do. But every time I have done that, I've also learned the lessons that have come from making those choices. So again, I don't regret making those poor decisions or making those mistakes or willingly making those poor choices because it has led me again to who I am today. And without those poor decisions and bad choices that we make, then we wouldn't have testimonies from people to help other people learn and know that it's okay to not be perfect and to make mistakes and to make poor decisions and choices in life as long as you don't continue to do that and not even learn from them at all. I really hope I'm making sense. So something I've touched on here in regards to making those poor decisions when you know it's the wrong thing. These things tend to happen to us when we have got some sort of karmic lesson to learn. So let's give an example getting into a relationship with someone that you know is bad for you and you go into that relationship it's not a good relationship it's unhealthy it's toxic and the relationship then ends this is this is just a hypothetical story and then say you say to yourself oh like that was a really horrible relationship i don't want to be in that relationship anymore i don't want to be in that kind of relationship anymore but it's all lip service and you don't actually mean it. Then you meet someone else and then you start seeing those exact same patterns from the previous relationship. But instead of getting out of that relationship, you go through the same situation again with another person. And then that relationship then breaks down, for example. And then you say, oh, that was really horrible. I can't believe that happened to me. I don't wanna be in a situation like that ever again. And then person number three comes and the same thing happens again. All the red flags that you know that you're looking for 
are all there, you ignore them, you go through the cycle again. Clearly a lesson hasn't been learned. So you're continuing to make these bad choices, these bad decisions, and you're wondering why the same thing keeps happening over and over again. You're like, but I'm not a bad person. Because just because you've made that choice, it doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. Because again, we're all human and we make mistakes. But what happens is this, God will use your poor choices to teach you lessons until you get to that point where you learn the lesson. So then say she comes out of this relationship now, I'm just gonna say it's a she. And then she's like, okay, this keeps happening to me. I want to make an active change now. So this person then starts working on themselves, building themselves up, building their self-esteem, etc., etc. And then say, for example, they're still in love with the person that they split up from in the final um, part of the karmic cycle. And this person comes back to them and they're like, do you know what? Maybe they've changed, let's give them a chance. But then this time is different because this person has now decided that they are making the active effort to change, do better, be better and want better for themselves. So then as soon as they start seeing these red flags, they're like, do you know what? I'm not going through this again. I've learned my lesson this time. And then they back away from that relationship. And then that's when the karmic cycle ends because the lesson has been learned. You're no longer making those bad choices willingly. You're like, do you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. And that's when you learn the lesson and then you can move forward from what you have learned. So that is a way in which God will use your poor choices and decisions to teach you a lesson. Something else that I briefly mentioned about going through these karmic cycles where we haven't learned the lesson and then we eventually do learn the lesson is the whole point of us being able to give our testimony. So I've just put another positive that can come from these moments of weakness and overcoming them is that we can give our testimonies and inspire others to do better, which is what I already said, but I've just got it written here and it's worded better, so I thought I'd say it again. Then to take that a step further, some people don't believe that they can be saved or believe that they are too far gone or that they need to reach a certain level of purity, etc. until they can get to a point where they can form a bond with God or form a relationship with God, Jesus, etc. But that's not the case at all. It doesn't matter what you've done. You could have done something absolutely dreadful. But if you are completely sorry and you want to make a change and you ask for forgiveness and it is coming from a genuine place you can you can always come back to God and that is a constant thing it's not just at that point where you are saved that is a constant thing I'm always coming to God asking for forgiveness asking for guidance how can I be better? What can I do? Give me strength, give me guidance, give me courage, give me wisdom, etc., etc., etc. Because this life that we live is a life where we learn lessons and the learning never ends. So if the learning never ends, we're not gonna ever be at a point where we know everything. So mistakes and poor choices and decisions are gonna be a constant thing because we are constantly learning and evolving and becoming better. And we also have to remember that Jesus said, come as you are. So even if you're in the most broken state, but you want to be saved, you want to make those steps towards having a relationship with God, it doesn't matter. You don't have to get to a certain level of purity. As I mentioned, you can come in your lowest state and God will welcome you with open arms as long as your heart is genuine. So again, linking back to pure intentions, I've written, being saved is an ongoing journey with many ups and downs, but as long as in the long term, the lessons are being learned and you're striving to do better and be better, then it's your intentions that count for a lot because God knows our hearts. So I've just got this last little bit to go through. And if anything else comes through as I'm reading this, I will share that information with you too. So what I've got written here is, 
He also told me that as humans, we're on a spiritual journey to have a human experience, to give us the opportunity to choose to surrender to his will for us. During this journey, we can either choose to learn from our experiences and draw closer to him, or we can reject him altogether. There are no absolutes when it comes to this, but rather a spectrum. So for example, you could go from being an atheist, not believing in any God deity at all. And then certain things will happen in your life and you'll go through these cycles of things keep going and happening. And then one day you're like, I don't want to live like this anymore. Something needs to change and something will reveal itself to you. And then suddenly you're like, maybe there's more out there and you start searching and then you find God or whatever it is. And then your life then changes. So that's what I mean by there's no absolutes in this because just because someone's an atheist doesn't mean they're always gonna be an atheist. The same way someone could believe in God and then something happens in their life where they decide that they don't believe in God anymore. And then there's some of us that are along that spectrum where we have days where we're unsure and we have doubts and things like that. So for me, for example, I've, I would say I've always believed in God from when I was a child. I never really felt close to God when I used to go to church and things like that. I think I've mentioned that in a previous video, but I always knew that there was a higher power because I've prayed since I was young, even though we prayed at school. But when we was praying at school, I didn't feel it. It was just going through the motions. But from when I was young, I did pray every night. But those were like my own personal prayers and that's when I felt like I had like a conversation and communication with God. But despite that, despite always having that belief, I'm not on one end of the spectrum and it's just like 100% believe in God, 100% believe that everything he says is going to happen, all these messages that he sends to me, everything's going to happen and everything I pray for is going to happen and everything he's promised me is going to come. It's not that straightforward. I have doubts all the time, all the time I have doubts and that's the human part of me and that's also being in this world because this world, yes God created the world but the system that runs this world is very demonic and it wants to take you away from what's good, what's holy, what's of God. So I will have a day where I'm just like, yeah, everything's going great. I know that my promises are coming. I know that this is gonna happen. I know God's got my back, da, 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 da. And I do know this, but at the same time, while knowing this, I can have my doubts and that's okay. And I'll be like, oh, like I know God showed me this sign that X, Y, Z is gonna happen, but this thing happened today and now I'm not so sure. And it's in those moments where I go back to God and I'm like, I know you showed me this message or sign or whatever, or whatever it is of X, Y, Z, but this happened today and now I'm not so sure. Can I please have another sign just to reassure me? And that doesn't mean you don't believe in God. It's not that you doubt God. It's more of a doubt in yourself because we're not perfect. We're imperfect and we're human and the distractions of the world can sometimes take us off track and then that's how we can get out of alignment because I always ask for extra confirmations just for my own peace of mind it's nothing to do with doubting God and he he knows that in my heart anyways it's nothing to do with him it's because of me I need the confirmation it's not because what he said wasn't true and that's okay like I don't want people to think that having doubts makes you a bad person or makes you a bad believer in God it makes you not believe in God and his greatness etc because it doesn't mean that at all like honestly it doesn't I had times where I did battle with that but it, it's not that at all it's because we're imperfect and we make mistakes and we have doubts and all of that stuff and sometimes it's not the doubts coming from us, sometimes it's seeds of doubt being planted by others. And you have to rebuke that because you don't want that. God doesn't give us confusion. God doesn't give us fear. Those spirits do not come from God. They are ungodly. 
but it doesn't mean that they can't come to someone who is righteous who is holy who is of god because the flesh is weak and then when the flesh is weak it can get into our spiritual side and our mental and sometimes even our physical and we end up doing things that we shouldn't because those seeds of doubt have been planted and when they've been planted and we start feeding into them those can then grow and kind of take us away from god so to speak and that's why I, that's why i mentioned that spectrum some days i'm like this and i'm like yeah nothing is gonna stand in my way of god's promises for me and then other days i'm like i'm never gonna get there i can't see anything that i'm praying for anything i'm working towards help me help me help me and that is okay too so just remember that whole thing of being saved doesn't make you perfect it doesn't mean you're gonna have complete faith all of the time it doesn't mean that at all there are going to be days that are harder than others and there's going to be days that are super easy and everything just comes to you like that but just remember it is a spectrum kind of went off on a tangent there okay so this last bit here i've put there's been times where I've rejected God over and over and not learnt from the mistakes. But I have to give thanks that I've chosen to surrender to his will. Again, this is in no way, shape or form means that I'm perfect and I always do the right thing. Because as I told you, I don't even this morning. I definitely kissed my teeth at a few people while I was out and about. Probably shouldn't have. Actually, not probably shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. But I did it anyways. And something else I'm trying to work on as well is not swearing so much. And then I swore and I was just like, oh. And then when I swore and remembered, I nearly swore again. And I was just like, oh, please, why are you doing this? And I know it was wrong because I'm trying to cut down on my swearing. And I've, I've given that to God and asked him for help with that. But because it's also an old habit, it's gonna take a while for me to break out of it. But something I have noticed and something I did notice about that today is I've said that I wanna make this change and I am actively trying to make that change. But at the same time, certain situations will roll me up and I will go against this new decision that I've made and choose to swear. But something else I've also noticed is I am more aware of when I swear now. So it doesn't just come out and I'm. it just comes out and I'm not even thinking about it. Now I notice when I do it. So even when I do it, even though I'm trying to not swear and I'm still swearing, there's now an awareness around it. So having that awareness will help me to modify my behavior so that I don't swear as much to a point hopefully where I don't swear at all. I don't know if it will ever come to that, but it's a journey. So anyways, yeah. So as I'm saying, being saved doesn't make you perfect. What else have I written here? So I've put, I'm sure I will continue to make mistakes and poor choices until the day I die. He said, what counts is our intentions and our choices to continue to be better for him. And that's the final thought of it. It's all about your intentions, what's in your heart, what you're striving towards and just trying to do better every single day. And better doesn't mean perfect. Being saved doesn't mean perfect. As long as your intentions are pure and you are trying your absolute hardest and God will know if you're not trying your hardest. So you can't just say, oh, I'm trying really hard, but you're not actually trying. That's the thing as well. So you can't, you can't fake these things. It, ha it has to come from a genuine place because you can't trick God. He knows every thought in your head. He knows every thought before it even manifests in your brain. He knows every word that's going to come out of your mouth before it comes out of your mouth. He knows everything. So you can't hide from him. But despite that 
even when you make every bad choice, every poor decision, when you willfully go against him and all of those things, if your heart is pure and your intentions are good and you do genuinely want to make that change, it doesn't matter about those things because he will welcome you with open arms. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've received it well. I've enjoyed giving it. And reading over those notes as well kind of gave me some reassurance as well on some of the things that I've been going through and some of the decisions that I've been not making recently, but like reflecting on certain poor choices that I've made with things. And then it's like, oh, do you know what? That's a reminder that I needed that it's okay that I made those mistakes, but he's still got my back. So again, if we vibe, join the tribe make sure you like comment share and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified of when i have new videos out and press notify all so you don't miss any of this tea that i'm going to give you take care of yourselves love yous